Welcome to On The Chain. This is Jeff here with co-host Chip. What's going on, Chip? What's going on, everybody out there all over the world in the On The Chain community from the U.S. shores to Australia to Europe to South America to the Middle East to Africa to Asia. Man, we're covering the globe everywhere we go. XRP Ripple versus the SEC chip. Big settlement incoming, so says some other YouTubers and some people on Twitter. We're going to have some commentary on that. And guess what? Coinbase is still being sued by the SEC. I think the SEC has a hard-on for uh, cryptocurrency. Maybe it's just Gary. Uh, and we're going to get a little bit into the XRPL. So let's go. Give a shout-out where you guys are tuning in from, wherever that might be. You ready to kick this thing off? Let's go. Welcome to On The Chain. Welcome to On The Chain. Everybody, listen, freshly back from Australia. I missed the last oh, show because I'm going be, to be crazy busy next couple of weeks. And I, I see that Papa Bear is in. So it's funny. I got up early this morning and uh, Papa Bear is sending me some video from the Surfer's Paradise, which we were on the Gold Coast, which is a cool little area, which has like shops and it's got a big old so he was sending me some stuff there but i wanted to put this up here and this was really nice he said what can i say about these two jeff and chip crypto rebels putting out the raw truth out on the chain great eating a burger downing a cold one with you guys i'll i'll see you guys after trump gets back in should be safe to return to the land of the free then <laughs> i was like it should be but let's not you know who knows i mean uh all things you know considered and this is the oh, burger that i'm that talking thing. about right here so this was uh this is what's called the queenslander um so i was there with uh not only Papa Bear, but also uh, we had Rob and Tommy were in there too that mm. came in all the way from Seattle. And it was great yep. to hang with those boys. Very Again, cool. I saw them in New York. It's crispy bacon, free range egg, tasty cheese, beetroot, which is just beets in the US. People are, what the hell is beetroot? Be beets? What is um, beetroot? I don't know. It's is beets. beetroot different than beets? Or is no, it's beetroot just beets. They just call thing? it beetroot. Because beet is like a potato, which are both considered roots. Yeah, they call it beets. It's the right. same thing. They just call it beetroot. Are they I don't both know what so I don't know what cos lettuce is either. I just like a lettuce, right? Lettuce, tomato, Spanish onion, relish, and herb. <laughs> cos lettuce. They say herbed. We say herb. herb. We, we herb. don't pronounce the H. Herb. No, it's, uh, they say herbed. herbs. Herbed. Is it herbed mayo or herbed mayo? Yeah, we say herb. So it's, that was a grilled burger. But look at that bad boy. That was all of that. It looked as, look at that, man. It There's amazing. Beets. That lettuce looks amazing. like uh, maybe like a romaine lettuce or something or a green leaf. Yeah, they say they call it, they call it this cause. I don't know what that is, but um, then this yeah. there we go, a little stone and wood. There you go, beautiful pale ale. That was delicious. And then so there's guys are the, crazy. <laughs> there's Jeff taking a picture of me, which we have that picture somewhere, soccer mom style. <laughs> soccer mom style. Did you do a Did you do a panoramic? Is that why it looks so long? <laughs> no, I, I did both. Hell. Yeah. Okay, I, I didn't yeah, know. I did. I did. Yeah. I just so there is funny. there's Rob. That's XRP. Um, McDew Rob's looking there. at that burger. He's like, dude, what He's the? Like, look at, this. Look that. at that Tommy's burger. Like, I want that burger. Tommy's saying a prayer right there. He's like, please, God, let He's me like, have a burger. He goes, I hope my burger is going to be as nice as so that. This is what happens when Americans go like, over there. They, get the, uh, they don't listen. <laughs> this is the problem with Americans. They go over, they don't indulge in the culture. And the first thing I do is say to Papa Bear, I'm like, bro, what do I order? He goes, get the Queen's letter done. And I'm on the Queen's letter because I know it's going to be phenomenal, right? I'm hanging. With an Aussie, so I'm gonna get. I want to get what they're gonna get. He's like, dude, this is great. And of course, mine was the best burger out of the bunch. You guys got like some American. Burger I ordered burger. a regular burger with a little bit of avocado on it, like Super I, gay, I Jeff. my standard Super protocol. <laughs> That's what I would have ordered. That do your bacon, it would have been good. Maybe I should have gone with the beets. But I've had a burger with egg on it before. So not, has the full vibe, but never thing. beetroot. Beet was great. Yeah, I've oh, never had God, the beet a, on the burger. What a delicious! Who would ever? Th I never would have paired that. Well, you know what that means? That Look means, at me. You know, I'm just like got to go back to Australia. So my wife taught me well. She's like, you don't eat until everyone gets their food, and I'm just like waiting it out. I'm like, please God, I'm so hungry to dig in this burger right now. <laughs> I want some of, of this burger right now. So uh, <laughs> everyone's like, Chip, eat your damn burger. Eat your burger, and there we are. And then there's a uh, berry, otherwise known as Papa Bear, right there. And there we are. That was the last night. That was uh, fun. Yeah, up. that was that was really cool. We were up at four in the morning, right, Jeff? The next morning, we were out the door in a Uber at four fifteen in the morning. And it was funny, guys, because I go up to the Uber and I'm, she's she's like, "What's your name?" I'm like, "Chip." She goes, "No, it's not." <laughs> I was like, "I was like, it is." She goes, "That's not the name I have here." What's your name? I'm like, "Chip." She's <laughs> like, "No." 
Of course, they have my first name, Steven, there. So it's just right. Steven. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's okay. That's it. I just go like, no, it's funny, but we're like, you're the Uber. We have your <laughs> your name is on the back on your uh, Rego. And your license. Rego. And your Rego. Rego. <laughs> so, yeah, that was uh, was a really a f- phenomenal time, I have to say. Really enjoyed the hell out of it. Um, Australian people, super warm. But we did the secret handshake, too. They were like asking qualifying questions like, Chip, you know, what do you think about this? Like, hey, are you one of us? Because not everybody knew us from the podcast. They knew us from the event because we were emceeing it. Don't and um, it yeah, so they were like, yeah, I do the secret handshake to sort of navigate to see if you were cool. You know, do the secret handshake. Like, it was serious qualifying questions. Did okay. you get the, like, I didn't bend the knee. They're like, you're one of us. Yeah, freedom loving people, man. Who, uh, who love it all. Oh, Fabio. What gosh. Is up, Fabio, man. What's about Fabio? I think we got I, some. Got some commentary I, from Fabio to throw out I there, too. To, I have to put that on there, too. Let me get Jackie, what's going there. on, Jackie? Coming in from NC. NC, North Carolina. North Carolina, for sure, yeah. Puerto Rico. Oh, beats are phenomenal, man. No, yeah, I never yeah, do no. Canned. no, I like yeah, fresh beets. I love beets, especially beets on a Greek phenomenal. salad. You chop it oh. up. But I like beets if you make it like a potato. It's also very good. Yes. Like a potato? Like a potato? Potato, potato. Crypto queen, what's going on? Crypto queen, lovely. Just, we had so many great conversations. And oh, and give a quick shout out where you're tuning in from. That would be really great. If it lasted a little bit longer, that would have been phen- phenomenal too. So I'm looking forward. We got forward. people now tuning in, Chip, from everywhere. We got people coming in. Come on, give some love to the Rumble people. We got people tuning in from X on three platforms, on X, on Chips, mine, and on the chain, which is awesome. And then we've got the youtube crowd and we have the rumble crowd so we got people tuning in on all these different platforms watching all of them i think you can only comment via x and youtube come on guys get the rumble stuff on, in let's here. get in there let's go people there so we go so there's Fabio right there he was you know the guy one of the main people responsible for putting that together and i gotta say blown away Man. just surprised the entire way as so much feedback i got i mean these are guys it's a team of people what seven or eight people that said we had a dream to bring this a conference to australia and they made it happen in an epic fashion and it was amazing Dude, i mean it went epic. off without a hitch the food was unbelievable the planning was great the speakers it was all about builders it was all it was a very positive um conference and it got so much That's out awesome. of it and and really talking to the attendees these people they're just they're so beyond i mean they're just so engaged and so he put this up there two legends right you know and i was so i commented and said you know legends is a bit much but i'll take it you know it's like <laughs> and then he then he said um then he qualified it and said now i was referring to jeff and i so there you go. so there you go so, and that's the great thing about you know oh, going yeah. on, the sense of humor good sense of humor themselves they can and it's just that thing um yeah. And then uh, Waza was like, no, no credits to you. Uh, CD Dub says, uh, c- come on now, my man. Embrace the legendary status. Never going to embrace that. Yeah. And then Doc's like, how tall are you? Up? <laughs> you look like seven feet. <laughs> seven feet. I'm a big gawking sort of a dude. I'm one of those weird sort of dudes. Dude, the picture of, of me between you and Dirk is ridiculous. Well, Dirk's, so Dirk's taller than me. I mean, I feel yeah. I feel short against Dirk. Dirk is like, um, I don't know, he's like 6'6 six, six or something. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, he just towers over everybody. And there's that one shot of us with bearable bull. And, and then someone's yeah. like, Chip, you look taller than bull. I'm like, just by a little, but just crap. We were all pretty yeah. tall in that picture. Yeah. XRP lab was just a, a, a major laugh. And he came up to me and told me his name. And I'm like, dude, who are you? Who are you? <laughs> but I'm like, XRP so, lab. Yeah, so many people so, came up and introduced with their first name. I was like, I don't know. That's great. I like it. <laughs> Like that's cool. Now, who, who are you? On next? Yeah, who are you for real? <laughs> you know, you Not your out, name. You super excited about. Hey, it, you know what was really cool? What I liked, which uh, it was just really awesome on the engagement. Man, the MCs. Tell you what, MCs. Big, the MCs big uh, right shout right out now. to they the MCs. Okay. They weren't perfect, but they did the best <laughs> just, they could. Just kind of average. Yeah, they did the best with what they had, but um, yeah. we wanted to stay <laughs> so, true to country. So, thinking, okay, we're gonna walk out, Jeff. What are we walking out to? And we're like, let's stay true to country, man. We got to put something. We got to, and it's got to be hard hitting. So first thing that popped into my mind was, uh, you know, I was thinking about guitars. All right, Savannah's in the house. Um, the first thing I was thinking was uh, some guitar. I was thinking midnight oil, midnight oil, but I was like, I need a good intro. I was like, okay, something strong. ACDC, back in black, and we can't play it here. 
Of course, yeah, day two, we stayed with the theme. So, oh, yeah. We had to go with uh, Thunderstruck, another ACDC tune. Just, you know, just and that was good, good. Beautiful long intro. Played the whole thing. Got everyone until fired the, up. Uh, singing started and people were fired up there. And, uh, man, what a, what a great conference. I mean, just mind blowing um, on every level. Um, and I got to say, guys, if they're doing 2025. I would plan now to be there next year because oh, yeah. you don't want to miss it. It's going to be bigger. Um, it's going to be crazier, better. And epic. I don't know if it can be better. I don't epic. know if it can be better, but it will be epic. It'll and, be epic. Uh, XRP Carbon. Jeff and, I, Jeff and I go to a lot of conferences, and this conference was exciting, you know, engaging. Uh, just the, con- the speakers were just incredibly fun to watch. And um, there's a lot of learning that went on there. I learned a lot, especially about Korea. Who knew that seven out of 10 people walking around Korea hold XRP? Man, Korea that was, is like XRP that was impressive. Central. Yep. And of course, meeting Jeff from Moai Finance and, um, and also Josh from uh, XRPL um, Korea. Those guys, and I wish you could see um, both of their presentations because they crushed it. Um, really good stuff. Mm-hmm. We'll get both of them on the show. So um, before we get it, yeah. What? Yeah. Oh, well, go ahead. Finish. Your you want to play that there. video, Jeff? Or you want to do? You want to play? Yeah. The... Yeah. Let's. Let's. I don't know if you have it. I closed it by mistake. So now no, I gotta I have, find I it all over here. again. Here it is. Uh, here he is. Got it. I'll play the summary video. But let's. This is something that Crypto Eddie put together, just kind of a summary of the conference, which I thought was great. And you'll hear some of this here. here the go. first not-for-profit XRP Gold Coast Wave of Innovation came to a close on Sunday, March 24th. Plans for 2025 are already underway. The three-day event with a two-day program went off flawlessly with more than 20 speakers that are making big contributions to building value in our blockchain space. Ali G, a newly named director for 2025, was a driving force with her enthusiasm and unwavered belief that it could be achieved. The team was so happy Anthony, the Wall Street bull, joined us to even do some stage introductions. A shout out to Two Ticks who handled the NFT ticketing and the sponsors who made it happen. A sincere thanks to all who volunteered their time, including Bill Morgan for his legal guidance. And he also moderated a discussion with Matt Donovan from Ripple about tokenization. I just want to say something about Matt Donovan and all of the all the folks that came from Ripple were incredibly it was awesome. excited to be with the XRP community, Jeff, right? Yeah. Oh, that was it was really great to see uh the Ripple presence. Uh the and yeah, it was great. XRPL presence, Ripple presence. I mean, it was really outstanding. I liked the feedback, liked a lot, you know, it was this was a this was just over the top, I think. You know, overall when you saw a community coming together and the excitement the energy the adoration just everything kind of fell into place you know really perfectly and so yeah man that i'll tell you what that comment right there you guys need to make a trip to korea sounds like i'll tell you what you know korea is an amazing place i love korea um now we're talking about south korea not north korea that's a little (laughs) you you guys are at the conference you'll be so so, something funny happened where um I think it was uh, Josh that put it up, but he had North Korea with an X through, <laughs> and then he had South Korea, and then Jeff, Jeff and I were referring to it as Korea, and I'm like, we have to remember it's South Korea, Jeff, and Jeff's right. like, what did you say? I, Jeff, remember, we were on stage, we are like, we have to remember it's South Korea, what did you say? <laughs> I was like, hey, yeah, I know the distinction between the two. Uh, my son is, was born in uh, in South Korea, so yeah, it was... <laughs> Rick, and you got to think you... Said it. Oh, look at that, plus... Yeah. At the same time, man, thank you for that rough reekin. Man, I got to share my screen over here. Hang on. I got to got to pull this up. Like, yeah, this this keeps so the show going, guys. It does keep the coffee here. and the things. It keeps their, keeps their podcast bills paid when you guys right. do stuff like this. But reekin, you got to make the trip next year because we will be right. there. You got to make it. What you got there, Jeff? Simultaneously over here on Rumble, we got Ray Run. Good morning, nice, guys. Ray. Welcome back. So we got... Uh, too little it's good to be back. I gotta tell you, it's good to be back. In. And, Very cool. And uh we had some we had a lot of funny things that happened. Jeff and I jump in an Uber at 4 a.m. and Jeff's like, uh, 
We're talking with, and what a what a fiery uh, driver we had. She was fired up, bro. She was yeah. like, up all night. I don't know if she was doing shots of espresso. <laughs> she was, she just, was, she was on fire. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jeff gets in the front seat. and she, Well, we both got in the back, and she's like, no one's going to sit in the front seat. See my light show? And Jeff's like, I'll jump up there. So Jeff's in there, and her light show wasn't working. She had a Mercedes that had all the lights on the dash, and she's like, she was mad. She's like, that's not working. I called those people. I don't know what's going on. She wanted the light show working. So she has me to fix us, it. She was just what we thought of Australia. And we were like, and Jeff's like, you know, have you been to the U.S.? She goes, I've been to the U.S. She goes, okay, well, you got to come to the U.S. And it's kind of like the same, except we drive on the right side of the road and there's no accents. She goes, I hear two accents in the car right now. <laughs> Jeff's like, oh, yeah, there are, I guess so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Never like, think about our, our accent as an accent. We're like the opposite, like, you know, everybody else and then the U.S. You know, we kind of just a plane. We have the worst accent of all, is Jeff. I, I, I think so. <laughs> and it depends where you go, because you get down into the into the southern twang, or kind of the yeah North Carolina kind of a drawl. Then you get up into the Midwest, which is just kind of real flat and nasally, you know. And then in kind of California, it's a little bit too much sun, kind of a little brain dead. Yeah. There look we go. King Toad. No, we didn't look at King Toad. Oh. No, <laughs> no, we just see a giant spider though. Yeah, all right. It was, it was a pretty giant spider. No, we didn't I, see any roos. No, we didn't see any, and no kangaroos, no koala bears, no wombats, no nothing, no poisonous kangaroo, snakes, kangaroo, no kangaroo. poisonous spiders, no nothing. large beetles the size of your head. Man, we saw nothing. You know what we saw? So we were on this beautiful golf course. It was awesome, and then we went up into the mountains. We okay. saw a stranded Dirk. So weird story. So Dirk, oh my god, Dirk this is crazy. From from uh, X Factor, he he had this he had this G wagon that we were driving in. We went to lunch one day with Crypto Eddie and um, and mm -hmm. Ivan from uh, Lost Art, and um, so we were in the back and we were like driving, you know, 15, 20 minutes in this white G wagon. So we pull up. Here we are hanging out with, hour and uh, a half. with Matt and Allie. And, an hour and a uh, half away from the hotel or an hour, hour and a half from, away from the hotel yeah, you're far we drive down to byron bay we pull in right next to a car and jeff goes hey that looks like uh dirk's g-wagon and i'm like come on jeff it's, that, it's ridiculous of course it's not Dirk." jeff gets out of the car he goes holy shit it is dirk yeah. dirk, <laughs> dirk and his girlfriend were like kind of like climb and we're like what are you guys waiting for and like the car won't start i was like so we so we, we, we didn't see a kangaroo no wombats you know, not, <laughs> we did find a stranded Dirk, though. I was like, the, right, we did see that. Oh, to the rescue, Matt got you know Matt Laroche uh, got out the uh, got out the jumper cables and we jumped them, and he got it started. And 21 days to the having's coming up, baby. BTC is winning big time. I'm hearing the next projection is 109. If it doesn't mm -hmm. retest down to 70, we're gonna hit. We could hit as high as 150. That's People good. are like, I'm not getting in at 70k. Well, wait till it goes to 140. <laughs> Right, we'll see what exactly. Then you're like, oh shit, I should have got. Wade in. isn't here. We haven't seen Wade in a while. What's something? Morning for Sunny Az, beautiful, in the house. Right. Cannibal mosquitoes. No, we didn't. No, I don't think we got. We were good with that. But there's a lot of weird sort of. And what I liked about the beach too is like our beach is kind of like a brown sand, or it's just kind of yeah. like a whiter sand. And our and if like you're our wearing coast. if you're wearing our shoes, yeah, like you, you're all crunchy all over the place. You get sand in your shoes. It's like a nice compact. Nice uh, kind of feel to the sand there, which was really awesome. There we go. Drop bears, uh, rare, but have killed people on golf courses. Drop bears are those more vicious koalas, subspecies. That's oh, what yeah. I want to see. That's yeah. what I want to see. I want to see. I don't want to see the you know the cuddly, Keep soft cuddling. and cuddly. I want to see the ones that can kill you. That's what. Like here, we have alligators. Alligators could potentially kill you. They typically don't. So if there's like that mean koala bear that has the potential of killing you, but Typically doesn't, but it's been known to do it. That'd be kick ass. See something. Papa like Bear will take us to see some kangaroos right. next year when we come back. Well, we'll be back next year doing a 2.0. So there you go. There you go. What I just saw something. Oh, there we go. We got two paws coming in from Cebu. Man, that's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, that's, that's a beautiful. nice place of the Philippines. Jeff, let's listen to the rest of this. The let's AV oh, yeah, partners where... were fabulous. We're in the middle. And it was so cool to have Ross Edwards and Neil Smith from Ripple hanging Very out with cool. us. Guys, by the way, very they were approachable. Awesome. They were at the parties. They were hanging out. They were drinking beer. They participated the fully. They weren't just some guys that flew in, did their thing, right. and like flew out. Super approachable, super mm -hmm. friendly. You know, they heard the good feedback and they heard the bad feedback. They took it all in stride, and they were oh, there. Yeah. And 
Oh, man, I had so many great conversations with both Neil and Ross. I hung out with Ross a lot. And, man, I had to say these guys, top notch. And it's a shame because what they're doing over there on that side of the world is way more impressive than they're, what they're doing over here in the U.S. And that team oh. over there, phenomenal. Like the Perfect vibe we reason. got off these three that, that showed up here, including Matt Donovan as well, mm -hmm. they're just top notch. Nothing, nothing, nothing uh, but great things to say about all of them. And they participated. They were there drinking the beers. They were there hanging out. They were there in their street cool. clothes. They weren't there, like, you know, in suits and trying to be all, like, you know, uppity. They were just so phenomenal. They were really approachable and and um, in great conversations. And also, also, they also had great senses of humor, too. They did a lot of laughing with those guys. Dude, that's the one Especially thing. Neil, that's Neil, one Neil thing, looked. Chip. In, in Australia, I found that almost everybody there had a great sense of humor. Like, you know, here, every so often you find someone with a sense. It's like over there, everybody seemed like they were just chill. Yeah, chill, chill, yeah, and, chill and funny, good sense of humor. Just yeah. the whole, yeah, it was really cool. There's the obligatory uh, supportive comment right there. Just, yeah. in case we were, just in case we were missing one. There you go right there. That's right. And here's here's another one from Caroline. Next time we will take you to the Australian Zoo. Oh, yeah. now, here's the thing. We don't want to go to the zoo. I want to see stuff in the wild the, habitat. Oh, yeah, it's safari. You know, it's like here. Be, yeah, that would I be. See cool. some yowies. I want to be. Yep. I want to be like see a waterfall and yowies. I want to be on the hike. I want to be like. I don't want to be a tourist going to a zoo, man. I want to be out in the wild and I want to spot right. one in the wild and I want to get in eaten the wild. by one of those bears. You know, <laughs> maybe I don't want to get eaten by eat a bear. Down by a bear, by a grizzly. Yeah. Do they have grizzly bears over? Do they have bears in Australia? I don't know. Is that a thing? That, I don't think it had bears. Bear bull wear a mask. Bear bull did wear a mask, and um, but it was a it was a stocking over his face. But he, um, I went up to him and said, "Hey, man, what's with the mask?" You know, because I I know bull, and we talk a lot. I have to say, his presentation probably would have shocked a lot of people because it was all it was a uh, it was hard hitting. You could have dropped the pin here, it bounced off carpet. It was that it was a point very poignant, very heartfelt presentation. No bears. Just well, pop a bear. one, just pop a bear. <laughs> just pop That's a bear. It's one bear. That's all the bear that matters, right? So, but his was all about bears. That's crazy. The crypto one percent is going to change it and make it right. You know, that's kind of what was the theme of his presentation that the one percenters today are going to be very different from the one percenters in crypto because they're going to make it right. They're going to change the things that need to be changed. They're going to do the right thing. And that's kind of what his presentation was about. Really good. Uh, if you know Bull and you meet him in person, he's a very, yeah um genuine um there's really no ego there he's just a really great down to earth chill. you know man yeah. and i said to him like really cool. what's up with this got to be uncomfortable he goes you live your life on your terms i said i'm living my terms right now he goes these are my terms he wants to be anonymous and i kind of saw a different perspective we were on a panel with him um with crypto eddie and he just said look i want everybody to be pop but i want to be anonymous I want to be able to walk free. I want to be able to, you know, he's he's got his investments. You got to remember that a lot of people can be very vindictive. There's a lot of haters in this community, a lot of a lot of great people. But, you know, you don't want people being doxxed. I see too many people get doxxed. XRPP, somebody was trying to dox him. We bet him in person, hung out with him. If somebody wants to remain anonymous, I want them to remain anonymous too. I'm going to support that. And when it comes to the bull being anonymous, Hey, we may not like it. You may not feel good about it, but he showed up. He was there the whole weekend. He engaged with everybody. He talked to everybody. He wasn't unapproachable. And that's just his terms. He's living his life on his terms. Yeah. And that's his terms. He wants to be anonymous. He wants to walk through an airport and nobody knows who he is. And eventually that's going to change. You know, there's going to be, it's, but it, on his term, that's his decision at this point. I thought he was really chill. Yeah. You know, I, I appreciated meeting him. And, you know, that's just how it's going to be. It's going to be interesting as things develop, as things progress. The space is growing so fast. And the one thing that you'd mentioned, there's so much hate in the space. It's amazing to me because we kind of ignore some of the commentary that we get. We laugh, you know, joke about it. But then I see what some of these other YouTubers get, the amount of hate that they get. And then they talk about different things. And it's really, it's shocking to me. It really is shocking. So, Ray Run says, I don't know about the new 1%. The current 1% are buying all the crypto. This may maintain the status quo. Yeah, but I think a lot of it was, wasn't was wasn't about, it was all about what we could do, what the possibilities were too. So, I mean, that's that's a point well taken, but I think it was more yeah. about about the people that can make a difference will. So it was more about that, but it was a really awesome um, presentation. 
Yeah, let's put that up. Part Sorry. to the finish. There, there were lots of first time okay, myth from Ripple hanging back. out with go us back. from yeah. the start yeah. to the finish. There we go. Hmm. So there's Mr. K yeah. on the end over there, who's also a frequent. There's Jeff. There's Berserker, Berserker. who's off. Berserk, who has his own thing. There's Papa Bear. There's Daz. There's me. There's Andrew. And there's Matt LaRoche. There's Matt, man. Look at that. Man. Look at that Motley okay. crew right there. So I'll pause it from here and there. There were lots of first. And there we go. There is um, there's Fabio right there. And there is Crypto Queen right there. There were lots of. Daz. The first time the organizers there's lukey mo right there um awesome dude had great time there we are hanging out in the background over there i'm face to face meets and it's and there's the that's what the variable bull was wearing right there so he had a stocking over his face right there and um there's dirk from uh x specter and of course crypto eddie and blockchain backer it's quite an experience backer. and there you see bull again it's to be shoulder to shoulder there's some other uh other community right there. There's Lady E right there. Is, is Bagman in there anywhere? Yeah, right there, there on the right. There, right there. With people you worked sure. hard with. And there's uh Sidoff and Crypto Carol Corolla. Also, she was helping out in the merch. People booth. you admire and there's Waza. 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 Waza was a blast to hang out with, but a very humble dude and very uh very down to earth. And half the time, I don't know. He uses so much slang. I don't know what the hell he was talking about at the time. <laughs> <laughs> he was a heavy uh, slang user, but Waza was uh, amazing. Now, this video is one. If we can find this video, this is what we ought to play. Because Crypto Eddie says, to him, hey, Waza, how the F are you? Because <laughs> he's always dropping the F-bomb. So that was just like a classic. He actually turned this video into a, an NFT. It's over on XRP. Ones right? that have been with the community. There we are. So this is uh this is when we were in the where was this, Jeff? Was this the, get the there. that that was uh tambourine that we we're right. over at uh at uh, Bailey's. The Bailey's oh, yeah. pub, the Irish pub in Tambourine, which was really cool. And that that made it official, Chip. I didn't realize it until I was sitting here and I was kind of counting out, looking, trying to figure out how many countries I've been in, been to where I've been into an Irish pub, which is pretty much all of them. I have found an Irish pub in every country I've been to, uh, including uh, India and Dubai. And so then I looked, I said, you know what? Continent wise, I've been out of I've been on five continents. I've been to an Irish pub. And that's well, so North America, quite an achievement. Australia, South America, Australia. South, then, America. Uh, South America, too. I, actually, I forgot about South America. That's two yeah. for me. Three. And then you're at four. So I've been to Ireland and uh, have you been to Northern Ireland, Jeff? Uh, no, unfortunately, I our have. last trips, I didn't go to Northern Ireland, but I want to. Okay. That's on our list. I want so to take wanted Barry to, from Scotland. I wanted to hit them all. So I did, uh, you know, obviously uh, Great Britain, drove all the way up the coast of Wales, uh, Scotland, Ireland, uh, you know, and Northern Ireland. So kind of hit it all there, which is great. So what right. did the settlement do? There's no settlement. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. I have it's to try massive, to, I, massive we have to, settlement. We have to talk know. to people off the cliff all the time, Jeff. And that was in that space We're, earlier today where I had to remind people that Jeff and I were the ones, the only ones only that ones. would never go to settlement. We talked we about the obvious say. reasons why, why there's no settlement because the, they tried to settle two other times and they weren't going to do it on the SEC's terms. There was right. never going to be a freaking settlement. We also said, when Bill Hinman dropped that, we said either he's going to be a villain or we're going to end up sending him a box of chocolates. Yeah. And we also said, Jeff, that that would be that that might this might be the quickest path to clarity. Now we didn't know that it was going to take two and a half years, but we called that as well. So you guys can uh, all in there. Mm -hmm. It's all on video. We called it. All of the influencers and the so-called cool people who know who are the ones shilling all kinds of garbage out there were wrong. So yeah. take it for what it's worth. Yep. Well, that's what we got to go through this, like, and then we're going to dig in. We'll dig into the study. This is long. Maybe we should uh, skip through. We're going to do this for a long time. So that was, that was Scotty from Futureverse. You know him as man. Mo Meta. There's John Deaton. This hung is out. The man. John right and I had some really good conversations, all politically. Um, yep. You know, we, we had the big dinner Thursday night, and John was just or absolutely Deaton for great Senate. to hang out with. Man. Oh, there is. Jay from Spend the Bits. Yeah. 
Chip and Jeff, along with the Evernode what, what, Codathon, what, what, kicked us off and the speakers took their positions. John Deaton had an amazing inspirational talk and did the honors of introducing Jay Campbell of Spend the Bits. Jerome Fowry of Immersive talked about one. his payment good. journey with MasterCard and the possible integrations for the future. Jerome, Jay, and Jeff of Moai Finance joined me for a payments discussion that was most insightful from stablecoins to friction. Jeff and the Moai yeah. Finance team on the Root Network is one it, to watch ran into with that their the DeFi airport. solutions yeah. well, live today Josh. with the digital asset XRP. Josh Kim from XRPL Korea is another one to watch. He joined a panel with Futureverse co-founder Aaron McDonald, Ripple's Neil Smith, and entrepreneur builder Shen Morricombe. The company Josh is associated with Catalyze today has announced a new $10 million fund to identify and support growth on the root Easy. network that is deeply integrated with the digital asset XRP. Pictured here with John is Dirk Sheppens and his CTO, Neil Kajak. This is Expectar, and we're celebrating their beta launch. We, we had quite a journey going to pick uh, pick up Neil from the airport. We certainly <laughs> did. Sure not, we had the wrong airport. We were so. at the wrong airport. <laughs> we, go, we were uh, driving, getting to the airport, and we, we get to the airport. Apparently, he flew into the airport. There was an hour and 20 the other way. And we ended up, he came into Brisbane and we were in uh, the Gold Coast Airport. That was quite interesting. <laughs> well, when he said there was a, he's on the second level, that kind of like, I'm like, <laughs> ask him what, and this I said to Matt, ask him what airport he's at. He's like, I'm at Brisbane. I'm like, oh, that's cool. We're at the Gold Coast. So yeah, it's only one level. We're looking around. Is there a second level that he could possibly be confusing? <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, no second go. level. So a little yeah. bit of, a little Attendees. Bit. Were able to experience go. the beautiful metaverse with their cool tech. There was some alpha dropped from the co founder of Futureverse, Aaron McDonald, that the Zaman wallet is now an option for users of the root network. I want to thank Ross Edwards for his time on a panel. His nine years at Ripple gives quite a perspective. And I found he really understands the XRP community. Shen Morningcomb has built a battle game, which all the attendees could try. It looks like it was a lot of fun. And then there was Bearable Bull, who presented from the heart. You could hear a pin drop. Mm -hmm. Blockchain backer and his facts will convince you that builders do matter. And Sadaf Jardan, marketing extraordinaire she owns the stage when she speaks and then alex from brass knuckle books wow he had us in stitches with the story of how the book food stamp warrior made it to print yeah, that was awesome that was one that of the was best. outstanding so i have some of that i have some of that video that i shot during this oh, and it was outstanding alex if you're man. out there watching, man, I got to tell you, this guy Alex is something else. He's a he's a real force to be reckoned with. Him he's and John a, teaming up on this here. John is such a stand for greatness, and John yep. takes no bullshit. And this whole the story of this in itself is just phenomenal. I mean, it was so good, right, Jeff? It was it was amazing. It really was, you know, outstanding. You know, I liked every aspect of it. I thought that you know, with uh, just from start to finish. As as they were explaining, as Alex going through everything, um, it was it was great. I, so uh, it was it was unexpected, you know. As they talked about the journey of getting of putting together the cover photo for his book, oh, and the hilarious. and so I was dying. Alex was explaining what he needed, you know, from a design perspective. Here's all the different shots that he needs on plain backgrounds. Then he gets into it and shows what John sent him. You know, and then he's right. like, and this is what he sent me. And this is, and he sent like one picture, like that you wanted like 12, 13. He said, as many pictures you can send, send me all the pictures you can send. He sends like two pictures and with like multicolor background and different <laughs> dimension of the yeah, house well, inside the room. And 
it was very we'll very have that funny. video for you in the future so we'll definitely have that oh my video God, that was the you. best was, yeah was, let's get through the rest of it. we're almost done let's here get, yeah and then we got we got to get the into the dj this, uh, every night stuff, xrp stuff, bags man yeah. and lady e took to the floor twice for a live performance this is my video right there jeff with it was berserker yeah. on the drums i Look loved every minute that was phenomenal that was i want to cool. thank ali fabio dazzling mick sadoff bill and matt that's the team that saw this through. We're a group that, by George, I think we can say we know how to put on a conference. Oh, yeah, you do. My oh, only yeah. regret is I didn't get to say hello to everyone. Right. So regret. let's try again next year. That's it. 2025. 2025. Wave of innovation. XRP yeah. Gold Coast. 20. say the same thing for that too, Jeff. There was, there was obviously not. Gonna be there. There's not a lot of, uh, let's put this next video up here. Um, it was so difficult to get away. I had to buy a beer. Oh, no. Van, you were killed. <laughs> no. So we did a live stream. Really, the only live stream we did was when we went up to Tamerlan, uh, which is the hinterlands. And we went up there inside of the, and there was from the side of the coast. And Jeff was in the back seat, and Van's like on the live stream. He's like, Jeff, touch your, rub your eyes if you're in trouble. <laughs> it was just, <laughs> it was. That was You're awesome. It was really out. funny. Chip, you know what it was amazing how great everybody was? Everything. I, yeah. okay. I couldn't buy I couldn't buy a beer for anybody. You know, it was amazing. Every time oh, dude, you, you know, we were like, somewhere I went to pay for something. It was like everyone's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, and I was just like, come on. It was it was amazing. The hospitality was phenomenal. Matt did such an amazing job. You know, when we got there, Allie and Matt coming to pick us up at the airport. And then Matt touring us around day one with all this stuff going on, all the organization. And here's Matt bringing us up to Tambourine, hanging out with us, showing us around. And it was just like the hospitality from start to finish. And then just the community, when the community showed up oh. and, you know, we're all hanging out. It was just, Love it was it. nonstop. It, you know, it was really, really a pleasure to meet everybody over in Australia. Can't say it enough. Uh, it was, it was really, uh, you know, heartfelt, you know, so. You know, thank, you know, I want to thank everybody, you know, for that also. But, yeah, you know, Chip, great. I want to, I want to put this up. Uh, this comes from uh, Bill Morgan, kind of like a, a summary thought on this, on the whole conference. And then I want to dig into the whole settlement thing and the loss and get a little serious. But this was Bill Morgan. In addition, the Wave of Innovation XRP Gold Coast Conference was a decentralized community based conference aimed to facilitate accessibility by lowering the cost of tickets bottom up conferencing not top down you know you go to a lot of conferences it's super super expensive and then you're super you know limited in who you can engage with and see and and all of that uh, bottom up conferencing not top down i bet anything the gold coast conference tickets were better priced than other comparable conferences mm -hmm. i i just want to say may, you know better price than other conferences i don't think there was another comparable conference no, honestly no i think uh, it stands out it was put on so well next year they're gonna have you know probably five times uh the attendance over there people from all over the world are gonna want to be at that next conference and and i'm looking forward to it you know and that was just uh, the number one conference sure. by far number one man I, it, was, it was top was top conference. level chip i haven't been to a in, to a conference that was on par with with that the way they they organized it for the first time been at lots of different conferences. It was like pros, this was yeah. the best. Yeah, the we best. go to ones that are like you know they have all the stuff. They got the the cameras on jibs, and it's all professionally done and shot and stuff. And this crushed it. I mean, that's how amazing crushed. it was. I mean, you saw the way it looked too. I mean, that background, the whole, the way the room was set up, the way the facilities were Lighting, set up, the the, the, everything. What we didn't see was the uh, you know the booths that were all set up, and Ripple had a booth there in presence, and Lodge Sign is as as a sponsor. And, and really, the sponsors are what really what made it possible. You know, people like Dirk yeah. from X Spectre, you know, um, being a sponsor, and of course Ripple and you know um, Futureverse, and th that's that's sort of you know their presence were there. But the big sponsors, very you know, very cool guys like Dirk and and um, and Ripple, and the ones that really made it you know super possible, um, and and other ones as well too. But just they're, they're the ones that really you know. Because they're hard, they're they take a lot to put on, you know. And it's like so people go like, why does it cost so much? Well, if you don't have sponsors that are paying a lot of the money, it's like when a when a when a band goes on tour, they go they need sponsorship yeah. because it's expensive to to put on. Just to, first of all, to rent the place, 
to have the facility, to do the hotel wow. room blocks, to do the um, the big large rooms, to hire a big um, professional audio company. These guys were on point. Yeah. They had the music cute. Yeah. They were so professional yeah. and, and well done. So it's, there it's was one thing missing though. I was a little disappointed. What's that? No lemon trees. We didn't have any lemon trees. So we're no lemon, lemon trees. trees. <laughs> oh, that's right. Well, next year we have lemon trees, damn it. <laughs> next year, any next year we, we want lemon trees. Price. Come on now. There are 580, 586 people tuned in right now. That's Rumble, fantastic. X, YouTube, and our one viewer over on Twitch. Oh, we always have just viewer. one viewer. We can't have more than one on Twitch. So Doesn't there's always great. just one. So if, on, if yeah. there's two, one of them leave. And then we just have one. So. Let's listen to this <laughs> short little clip by Jeremy Hogan, and we'll here play. We we'll put Chris Larson on Let's here go. next. She yes. ruled on this XRP is not a security in a very interesting way. She quoted other cases which say kind of the same thing, and so it's called what's called dicta because it's not an essential part of her order, but it is in there. I don't think you can appeal that. I don't think that's appealable. Right. I really don't. I don't think that any appellate court can can touch that part of the order which says XRP in and of itself is not a security, which is really what the, what's important for the XRP holders. Man, right. that to uh, the people, to the investors, the people that the SEC and Gary Gensler don't care about, the investors, the individuals, the individuals that believe in the innovation, the investors that believe in the expansion of the blockchain and the cryptocurrency market, the investors on a global scale that see this as the future, and then you have the Gary Genzo and the Elizabeth Warrens of the world that want to stick to the old times. They want to keep counting, you know, uh, counting on 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 their control and and their uh, the legacy uh, system. Could you imagine if if we you know had to deal with legacy systems this entire time when we moved into like a banking infrastructure where it became digitized and people are like, no, 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 I want to, you know, we want to just make sure that we keep everything. And maybe that's not a bad thing. Or yeah, have, I want to have all the money in the safe. Remember the bad, the old days, like the old West used to have uh, the the bandits would do the bank robberies, and they'd bust into the safe and they'd take out everybody's all the gold and whatnot in the safe. I was thinking about what I'm saying. I'm like, I don't know, I don't know where I'm going with like, that because I kind of like the idea of the the gold in the in the safe and knowing that these guys are. But no, uh, I'm just thinking. You know, it's amazing. You know, think about it like a a, a buggy whip. You know, and when the cars were uh, taking over and all of a sudden there were modern cars on the road and then the buggy whips. But then government would be like, you know what? No, we still want buggy whips. We don't want the cars. Not going to allow that to happen. <laughs> That's kind of where. Look at this, Jeff. Caroline says, Jeff, I promise you lemon trees. That's right. Next year. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I had spoken to Caroline about it when we were there and and uh, Caroline did a great job uh, providing all the uh, the flower arrangements and the yeah, plant arrangements that, that were there. Yeah. Yeah, that's what he said. Where, yeah, well, I'm trying, come on. She did a phenomenal job. It was really, a great really job. Great. Yeah, everything looked good. And she's like, all right, next to next yeah. year. She didn't know about the lemon trees. That's okay, but that's good. But she was uh, right. a great. Yeah. What a what another amazing uh person to meet there. <laughs> we need lime trees for the coronas and tacos. Now, <laughs> if they were to have I don't even know if they have lemon trees in, in Australia. I don't know if that's a thing. Maybe yeah, they don't Caroline even have lemon know. trees. If anyone would know, Caroline would know. So there you right. go. Jeff, next year I need to next year yeah that would be uh funny so let's listen to this bit by uh this uh chris larson here let's listen to this little uh clip here the judge really admonished the sec uh really called them out in a way that you don't really see very often i think it's just more proof that gary ginsler's uh, decision of sort of engaging this regulation by enforcement rather than getting clear laws he knows they're not clear he just likes that lack of clarity mm -hmm. so that he can go after anybody and make up the rules as he goes along through bullying and that's not the american way this should be a congress we should have clear rules from the legislatures not through these sort of unelected power hungry and really misplaced decision makers that you see in gary gensler and yet who is chris larson going to vote for that's right gary gensler. the gary gensler crowd so <laughs> it's so funny wow 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 cry 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 bully 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 jerk 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 I know what I'll do. I'll vote for more. This I'll is what vote for the this same guys. People <laughs> in New York and California watch their their states be destroyed. And you know what? Keep voting for it, people, because you deserve it all. Everything that comes for you, you deserve it 100%. You vote for it, you get it, enjoy it. Joe Bud, man, that that's that's the truth. There were a couple things that happened in Florida, and 
that's where there's all there's almost no citrus. It used to be that everybody had a citrus tree in their backyard to the point where I think almost most homes. I, I don't I don't know anybody with a citrus tree anymore oh. at this point down here. I couldn't even tell you where the nearest citrus tree was in South Florida. I think there might be one area down here. There's a farm somewhere, but the area I live in used to be all orange groves. Granted, there's also, you know, there's some, but, and as you go North in Florida, where you would think that Florida, you go to the grocery store and you're gonna be like, I'm going to get all Florida citrus. I want Florida lemons, Florida grapefruits, Florida oranges. You go to the store and they're imported from all over the place. And there is almost no more Florida citrus. The Florida citrus that's left, I think, goes into orange juice. And that's about it. And that's all north. And then the other thing that disappeared from Florida were the coconut trees. Hmm. Even though we have a lot of those now in the backyard. Well, they start to they make drop so massive coconuts. With coconuts. You used to have so many things with coconut. Like my favorite ice cream was coconut ice cream. Now it's made coconut. with uh, cashews. I was like, you can't be because there's that's so little coconut anymore to make all this stuff out of coconut. But the lime and the coconut. Coconut and lime, yeah. <laughs> Brazil's number one now. There you go. Beautiful. It, yeah. All right. Um, the cases I suspect uh, Brad, Chris, David at all will you vote. Got the it. Same way. Of course they will. And they, they're going to vote. They vote to their own demise, which is right. sometimes I, you don't get it. You got to get well, that's it. What now, but now they're outspoken. So they're going to try to make the change, but they're going to be outspoken against it to make the change. Then they're going to vote for it. They got it. They need more influence, more power. But that's they're kind of thinking that from that route. It's like, how can we get more power? How does Ripple get more control, more power to have influence over those that get appointed into positions like that? So they can keep voting the same way and they're going to keep getting the same garbage. You know, it's really unfortunate. You know, it's just uh, 2024, guys. 2024, there are a couple major elections. One of them that's going to make some major changes, John Deaton. John Deaton has got to win. John Deaton's taken on Elizabeth Warren. The first time I've ever seen, Chip, that an incumbent that's supposed to be entrenched in her position or his position, but as a as a sitting uh, incumbent senator or congressional representative, in this case, uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren, is terrified, absolutely terrified that John Deaton is going to unseat her to the point where she's already pushing out negative ads against John Deaton. That never happens. If they're not nervous, they act like the other person doesn't even exist. They okay. won't even acknowledge okay. their presence. Like they're like, I don't, I don't have to worry about anything. I'm going to win. I don't need to worry about there. She is so terrified of him because look at what he's done. He's taken on the SEC, 75, 76,000 people. The one thing that she doesn't, and I think she's woken up to realizing now is that the crypto community is going to be massive. And, and it's not just all about crypto. It's about the deceptive practices that she's built her entire career on. And so that, that's going to unfold. And John Deaton, there you go. That's, that's a major one. Right there, the other Daniel, one. Yeah. Unchained Elephants. Who's, uh, Daniel, you got to go to that conference next year so we can meet up. You That'd guys need awesome, to move yeah. to Thailand. Plenty of coke. Well, moves are pretty heavy. That's, that's a heavy that's commitment, Daniel. Business. We've got to visit first. But, uh, for the coconuts. <laughs> Why did you move to Thailand for the coconuts? Uh, just for the coconuts. That was yes, it. That was the, the only reason. It wasn't uh, wasn't the uh, <laughs> amazingly uh, awesome country with clean living. And yeah, Daniel tells me all the time about how cool it is over there and uh, would love to get there. I'd love to meet up with Daniel. What a great you know guy in the community and always doing great stuff, especially with the uh, those elephants, man. It's, it touches your heart in such a beautiful oh, way. You know, yeah. to see, to see, you know, see freedom, you know, being chained up for 40 years and then just getting freedom, man. And just man. watching them, how they don't even know how to act in, in the beginning. And they just like, they just go back into, you know, um, in, into nature. So it's a great thing if you guys support Unchained Elephants. What an amazing NFT project. God, fantastic. Can't say enough great things about it. Dude, 600, 650, oh, 658, 658 people tuned in right now. Between X, I love it. Rumble love it, yeah. and YouTube, it's all. Awesome. Let's hear it. You know, there was a, so there's a whole bunch of things in the community. You know, Crypto Law asked if this was today. Can anyone in New York confirm? According to Court Listener, there was a settlement conference scheduled for it was yesterday. Well, it was, yeah, yesterday. Oh, that was, that was, uh, Ripple gave yesterday. me enough to share a comment, but <laughs> Mr. Huber, Mr. Huber said this settlement conference. Mark Fagel, please help. What does this mean? So, Securities and Exchange Commission versus Ripple Labs. District Court, you know, Jeff and I both knew what this meant, but let's hear it from uh, from Mark because uh, sometimes you got to. So as much as people are in this space, it, 
they just go, they, they, they lose their minds, right? They listen to these nutters out there that are talking about settlement, 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 settlement. All the big guys that have 200,000 subscribers who are wrong about everything. By the way, I did it, Jeff. I traded it. Balloons, baby. <laughs> I did the balloons again. <laughs> the balloons and the smiley face you did all balloons. at once. I don't know. I don't know. I can't get. I, <laughs> and it so, never happens again. <laughs> it happens again. You can't do it. I'm not even trying to do it. So Mark said it means the parties have settled. Ripple will pay two billion. It's now illegal for you to trade XRP. Oh, I'm sorry. I read that wrong. It's a <laughs> mandatory people mandatory mandatory pre settlement conference. Part of the original scheduling order. Odds of settlement about zero percent. Jeff and I have been saying this, but you will hear in the XRP community from the nutters, right? The hypesters. The ones that are the official yep. in the know will tell you that, oh, no, it's going to settle. It's going to settle, settle tomorrow. Man. Of course it's going to settle. Settle, man. Now, now, if, the da if, if, the, if Ripple sold $700 million in securities, which Judge Torres ruled that because they sold it to institutional, that was the security. We saw a, a, a monumental case pass last year. The name escapes me, but about disgorgement, that, that you can't charge a penalty that's out of line with the actual the crime, right? Or, or the or the issue, the there has to be a penalty phase, 700 million, and now they're asking for the court for 2 billion. So where do they settle? Where do, how are they possible? What kind of human person can't have basic logic skills to say like 2 billion over here in the SEC, and Ripple's like, what if we pay you 1 million? Yeah. 1.9,789,000,000 over here in the... In the 1.5 million over here. Like, where is the settlement? Where's the common ground? And what does the SEC still think? XRP is mm -hmm. a security. What do they care about? Judge it's Torres said that XRP was is not a security when sold retail. They don't care about that. So where is the common ground? Use your heads, people. Wake up. Stop watching the nutters out there like who this. are completely wrong. Yep. Yeah. So watch, this, watch this is Jeff, I, I had a professor. Let's settle tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, I know. Yeah. Settlement. Hey, we settled. Like, like it has, makes no sense in the world to settle. None. <laughs> Years ago when I, uh, I was in, I was in law school for a brief stint. And I remember that they had, um, the, the first, one of the first days the professor got up and he held his hands up like this. Then he said, here's the real world and here's the law, you know, and, and, and you kind of go down this, uh, this tract, you know, and then you have to, you kind of have all the interpretation, all the stuff that goes on in between it. And, and I look at how people try to interpret things, Chip, and you and I, you know, I look at things and you look at things from a geopolitical perspective. You have the geopolitics that intersect with the economics, and then you, you know, try to figure everything out. Uh, and it, it becomes really, you know, intriguing when you see people that don't get it. They don't understand it. They don't think uh, along those lines. Uh, they want to remove uh, the politics from the economics of it. And, and then you try to figure out here's reality. So reality is over here. Uh, and then, you know, how do, how do you bring it all together? And there's just individuals that are going to start talking about government buybacks and, you know, all these different things that fit in with the dancing bear theories. You know, but at some point, reality uh, comes into fruition. It's kind of like, you know, looking how, uh, Larson and, and the rest of the group keep voting for the same people over and over and over again and expecting a different outcome. At some point, reality is going to smack you in the face and you're going to wake up and say, oh, shit, you know, I guess that no, is that exactly how it works. It's no, the yeah. intersect. Economics and politics will always intersect together. And when you understand that part of it, then you can start uh, better interpreting or interpreting and, and you know, analyzing how there could be potential outcome. That's why, Chip, you and I look at it from that settlement perspective. It's not possible. So my point is, is that you have two parties that are on opposite ends of the spectrum. How do you, where's the intersect? How do you get the two parties to intersect when the SEC under Gary Gensler, it's all about power control and destabilizing this space. And then you have Ripple and the, you know, the rest of the, uh, uh, cryptocurrency community over here trying to say, hey, this is what we're trying to build. Here's what we're trying to develop. Where's the intersect? How do you get settlement from that? How do you get a settlement? Unless unless they're going to come out, Ripple's going to come out and completely acknowledge that somehow the SEC was correct or the SEC is going to completely acknowledge and accept at some point that, uh, that Ripple is correct. But the SEC is still fighting the fact that uh, XRP was deemed a non-security under Judge Torres, 
they want to appeal that. So how, where's the settlement going to come from? I, I just don't understand it. It doesn't matter, you know, Jeff. It just if doesn't make any sense. you have 200,000 people listening to you, you just say a bunch of nonsense garbage. And like, and remember I told you this, remember I told you that, and this is the way it is. And then getting down on builders, I mean, and and, and, and then going all in on, on Ripple. Listen, Ripple's one component. Anybody can come in here and become the next Ripple. That's the thing. That's the funny part is the XRPL is... is is uh, decentralized. Anybody has a shot at, at being the next Ripple, going to f- finding some financing and then taking off and finding a use case that will be different from Ripple. So this whole thing of of uh, this the, the kind of hype that happens, I get it. Yeah, listen, five eighty nine, I'm all in. Would I love to see four hundred thousand dollar XRP? Yeah, I would. Is it likely? No. In my lifetime, definitely not. I mean, could it shock me? Well, anything can these days. When when twenty twenty happened, I said no. You would have laughed if they told you that, that you would be uh, locked in fear. I mean, I wasn't. I was out driving around, no mask. I, that's just me. I went in the stores. I'm like, hey, do you, do you understand uh, this? Did you talk to my doctor? No. Okay, this is between my doctor and I. Are you familiar with HIPAA laws? Okay, great. So this is my privacy. Get out of my face. I'm not wearing your damn mask. Kick me out of the store. We'll take it, take it uh, to court. And that's it. And then you look at like more monkey business. Said you can buy medication over the counter for stupidity in the UK. It was signed in for ten Downing Street. So it's crazy. Imagine you know that the insanity. You can get paracetamol what, and codeine there. You can't get par- I found out you can't get paracetamol and codeine in Australia. In Australia. No, <laughs> but you can get it over the counter. And over in the UK, it's like paracetamol and codeine. Yeah, just don't buy too much because you get OD on that. But um, you know, you can only buy one. You can only buy one pack. So, so the meeting with uh with them was all uh. Plan. Well, it's mandated by the court. The court yeah. mandates the fact they, that they, they had to get together. The last time there were two meetings they had to talk about settlement. The court would rather them the parties come to a settlement, and right. people are like, "There's a settlement that. meeting. There's a settlement." People wake up, l- learn some basics about uh, how how the law man, uh, you know, the court mandates stuff. Mm-hmm. I wanted to put this up, Jeff. This is Laura Shin. She might be one of the most informed humans on the planet. She has a po- podcast all about e- ETH Maxis. And the mm-hmm. thing about this woman has rubbed me the wrong way so many times. I've really not spoken out about her, but she's one of the dumbest humans on the planet. She really just can't see past the, her finger on her face. She's like, there's a, my, my wife has this phenomenal uh, saying in Spanish that you can't, you can't block the sun with your finger, but this is Laura Shin blocking the sun with her finger all the time. Um, I for, I'm going to have to learn the phrase in Spanish. It's awesome. But um, they have a lot of cool like isms, right? Okay. So she says, excellent story by Stephen Ehrlich. From Forbes Crypto on zombie chains, there are no fewer than 50 blockchains today trading at values of more than 1 billion, which are at least 20 functional zombies. Guess which ones they mention? And she goes on to say that, um, here it is right here. Last year, Ripple's XRP ledger earned a mere 583000 in fees processing transactions across its network. According to Masari in Wall Street parlance, that would give XRP a price to sales ratio of 61689 Nvidia, the market's hottest stock with a market capitalization above two trillion and revenue of sixty-one billion as a price to sales. Now, this is what happens when you are a dumbest human in the room. XRP has low transaction fees. That's by design. Now, on the other hand, ETH, the more usage you get, you get astronomical. Jeff and I tried to move seventy-five dollars of ETH that we had. We couldn't move it because the gas fees were over a hundred. Okay, so it's a different type of a setup and scenario. Um, I know somebody else called it out here. I can't remember. Well, I know Panos. So Panos called it out and says, yeah, excellent yeah. piece of nonsense and misinformation by Stephen Ehrlich, who's clearly misinformed and didn't bother to do basic research for the PC road. Unfortunately, <laughs> these are the idiots who write on mainstream media and lecture the public and the masses. That's they don't they don't educate themselves. They don't they don't learn the media. The media is like a poison, right? And it's a poison that supports a political agenda. And so the sooner people come to the realization economics and politics intersect, the economics of the politics. So the media is the economics of the politics. They're the propaganda. They're the misinformation. They're going to they're going to promote whatever they think is going to improve uh, the uh, visuals for the political party that they that they're uh, representing and they all represent the, that one political party. It's very obvious. And then the economics of it, how, you know, if you can represent and you can propagandize, you know, for them, you're also going to bring in the money and the revenue for them. And it's all about that intersect. And, and that, and that's what it's always all about. And, always. and so you get people like that. They don't educate, they don't do the back end research. And most of them are just shills and mouthpieces, similar to a lot of the people on YouTube that are just shills and mouthpieces, you know? And, and so it's the same thing in regular media. There's no difference, 
you know, they're going to shill and they're going to be a mouthpiece for a specific agenda because it's the economics of the politics. And when you, when that comes to the conclusion, yeah, then yeah. What is, Oh, there you go. There it is right there. There you go. No intent no is the power of el sol con, con el dedo. El, 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 el dedo. There you go. So that's the <laughs> one she like always that. says. And I love that. I love that <laughs> phrase, man. This is fantastic. Thank you for that, DK. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, she says it all the time. It's like, but, and it's the greatest thing ever because you realize how ridiculous it is. The other one that she has is like, you know, you know how like you're walking along, Jeff, all of a sudden you like, you, you catch that foot on the ground, you almost trip, you feel like it. It's always when so, I'm in front of a bunch of people like that are watching, you catch that foot, and you almost fall and trip on yourself. She says, and there's another phrase in Spanish that says, uh, I tripped on an ant. <laughs> <laughs> so, got to run, Van. Good to see you, my man. Good to see you. Um, also, I wanted to go to this. So, Bill uh, Morgan also commented on this. And uh, the zombie chain, the SEC alleges more oh, than yeah, 80 yeah. institutions signed on with Ripple to utilize since the Ripple lawsuit commenced, despite the chilling effect of the lawsuit on Ripple's business in the U.S. Poor Laura Shin is so poorly informed. These people don't even try. I mean, the Bitcoin maxis. Listen, I was a Bitcoin maxi. I, the first, the first, I, I went right over to Stellar because I heard that that was decentralized, and XRP was a banker's coin, and XLM was the decentralized one. I believed all the stuff. I was in there. I did my own research and said, uh, "Guys are so misinformed." But this is what happens to a populace, which can't, which is so. And this, Jeff, this is why I disagree with guys like Chris and Brad. They're always going to throw down with the left because they're lefties. They're, the ideology drives everything they do. Um, they make more money in, than God, and they want to put cameras in, 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 in. And listen, I love what Ripple's doing. I love Brad and Chris for what they're doing for Ripple, but I don't agree with their politics. And that's okay to say that. It's okay to say that I don't agree with the way that the, you know. I don't. I don't like. I, I told all those, all three of the guys at Ripple uh, over there. I said I'm not down with the CBDC. One of the things I said was, yeah. okay, so if the XRPL uh, can take any change any fiat to any fiat in four to six seconds what do we need a cbdc for mm -hmm. right or if, if most of the money supply 90 percent of the money supply usd or any other money supply is already digital if there was a cash call we don't have the cash we don't have that much cash printed to cover it it's all digital so what's the point of it you know and it's so funny because i, I said the only reason you want a cbdc is for the programmability. The control. Didn't, I didn't get any pushback on that. That's the only reason that you'd want it is the programmability. And mm -hmm. I even put out an example to say if there was fraud committed, end up in someone's account, could you do a withdrawal? They said you could do a clawback. Well, what if you didn't have the clawback feature enabled? So mm -hmm. the whole idea is that, yeah, we can, we love the Ripple company. I love what they're doing. I love the cross border payments. But again, it's okay. Listen, you can be a fanboy. I'm a huge fanboy of Apple. I'm not a fan of Tim Cook. I don't think he was the right guy for the job. I don't think he, I still don't think he's the right guy for the job as much as I love Apple. I mean, when you got when you got their best designer that's ever designed since, you know, there's like maybe three amazing designers of the last century and you have one of them for Apple that leaves, that's a telltale sign that that, that Apple's not the company it once was. And if you're Steve Jobs and you want to have you be immortalized in history, you put a guy like Tim Cook in charge because if you want to wreck a company faster than you can wreck it, you put a guy like Tim Cook, zero visionary, zero personality, just not the right guy for the job. And there are some probably people in Ripple, or, or I would say in Apple, that could do a better job. As much as I'm a fanboy of Apple, I'm okay to criticize them on stuff. When they do something great, fantastic. Now they're going to have they announce their their new conference that's coming up. There, you know, uh, they talked about absolutely uh, it's going to be amazing, and they're going to probably AI. And someone said joke, jokingly said. This is where Apple is going to say they invented AI, you know, and Apple's mm -hmm. been slow behind the AI curve. You see mm -hmm. Google jumping in, you see even IBM jumping in. What's Apple been doing? Siri has gotten progressively worse over the last seven years. Seven years ago, I could barely touch my phone, mumble a bunch, mm -hmm. it would get every word. Now I have to go, no, forget it. I Siri and enunciate every word and it still gets it wrong. So I'm like, yeah. Siri's become a pile of garbage. Every yeah. every incarnation of that, every update, it's gotten worse. <laughs> you said it. I did. I'm just telling you. I'm a fan. So <laughs> they, do, they do crappy stuff. It's still better than Android, but I'll, I'll give you yeah. that. 715 watching right now. That's awesome. We've got Rumble, X, and YouTube. 
cranking it out here. 715 watching live at this moment. Big shout out to all you guys for joining us. If you haven't done so already, go ahead, whatever platform you have, make sure you're following us. If you're over there on X, you're probably following. If not, make sure you click whatever you got to click. Go ahead and follow. We're there on, we we're on three different X's all right now. We got chips going, mine going, and are on the chain. So make sure yes. if you're not following on the chain, make sure you click uh, the follow on that one. If you're not following over on Rumble, go ahead and follow on Rumble. If you're not following on YouTube, you know what to do. Also, you got to follow over on YouTube. I'll make it easy for you for YouTube. This is Somebody. what it looks like. Check it out. Thumbs up, subscribe, bell notifier. That's what YouTube looks like. If you're not familiar with it. Come on, so. Jeff. Everyone's familiar. So one of the funny things that, that someone came up to a conference is, where are your sound effects? Is like, do you have the one from the ETH conference? So I was like, they're asking us, like, can you imagine in the middle of that conference we just played this? Right. Yeah. Oh, Miami in the house. Beautiful. And I guess we could have, you know, we'd have to, you know, set it all up. We'd have our sound effects. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't see how we do our sound effects. Holy shit. Like, let's not do that. That's a bad idea. Yeah, that is a bad idea, voting for uh, the left. I mean, he, socialism is a weird thing. It's like, you know, you can be crippled. Like in Venezuela, you could be crippled. Like 70% of the country can say we want freedom, and the other 30% are like, nah, this is cool. They're, they're still going to throw down because ideology is a, is a it will grip you, it will hold yep. you, and you will still believe in it. Socialism's never worked. Communism's never worked anywhere it's been yep. tried. But Always don't do. worry. There's somebody a little bit smarter than you that that hasn't put their implementation yet, and th there's going to be better than all the rest. It's That's never right. worked, but they're going to make it work. So they're going to make it work. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be gonna awesome. Be Dude, it's going to be awesome. This. You're going to see. And then, like I saw my my wife's country, Chile, throw down, and I said, "Look, if you vote for this guy, you're you're going to lose your country. You're going to back back the Pinochet days with a, a dictatorship. That country was turned around. The GDP was crushing it." They got a guy from the banking world who came in to be president, started turning that country around, low crime, uh, low everything was turned around. And you know what they did? They voted for this. This Have you seen this before, Jeff? We're going to work for the lower class people. That's right. We're going to give you free things. Gasoline's going to be cheaper. Housing's mm -hmm. going to be cheaper. Does that sound familiar? Jeez, yep. it, it worked oh, so well in again. Venezuela. It's Give like, it away. It's going to be free. Everything's going to be free. It's going like, to be perfect. Okay, I guess, yeah, we, I guess we forgot about Pinochet. We forgot about that. I guess we forgot about Venezuela. You know, it's no big deal. <laughs> sure, we'll go in that. Meanwhile, you got guys like Malay going in Argentina. 100 years yet. I mean, sure. Argentina was the shining star. It was the most amazing country in the world. And they crushed it with socialism. Mm -hmm. but, but 100 years didn't, didn't quite work, but they were still willing to give it a shot. P Malay came in there. Within three months, they had a surplus. He got rid of, he's now fired like 95,000 government workers. That's what needs to happen in the U.S. Yeah. Brash it on. All these new jobs you hear about, they're all Especially government work jobs. What, is yeah. half the country going to be working for the government? I mean, it's yep. ridiculous. That's what they want. And they're inefficient. I was, I had an experience yesterday in engaging <laughs> with a uh, government uh, efficient, assistant, yeah, really? assistant. And it was horrible. Just horrible. First of all, there was a little bit of a language barrier. Up, I could get over that a little bit, and then, then we went on, and it was an hour of my life that I'll never get back, and it's brutal. The government typically will hire the lowest common denominator; they don't hire the best and the brightest. And if you have to get, you know, I'm not saying you know government work isn't work, but at the same time, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how you get into these jobs where people can't be fired. I don't like it. I don't like the teachers can't be fired. I don't like that professors get uh, can't be fired. I don't like that government workers can't be fired. That's all socialism. Forget about it. You're either good at your job or you're not. If you're not good at it, you get fired. And and everybody has to live by that equation. There should never be a position where someone's too comfortable in their job where they're not going to do their job properly. And and that's it. If you want to work, if you want to own your own business and run your business the way you want to run it eh, for good or for bad, that's your business. But if you're going to work someplace work to make sure that you're the best of the best at whatever you're doing and and don't you know uh impact everybody else's life because of it look at our experience when we we're coming back uh we had to unfor we had the unfortunate experience once again of having to fly through lax and i'll tell you what it's a miserable experience two two airports that i can't stand being in one of them is lax the other is jfk uh, and not to say the people in new york aren't 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 decent people in california the experience there was just miserable 
It was, oh, it was just horrible. Sure. And just to see how miserable the people working there were, we go to the TSA, you know, we go through and in Miami or Fort Lauderdale or Palm beach or wherever in Florida and everybody's happy. And it's just kind of a, and it's okay. And they treat you with respect. We go through LAX. It was just miserable and brutal and they don't know how to do anything properly. And it was just, their organization is ass backwards and their attitude is ass backwards. And it just shows you, it's like, this is the best of the best that California has to offer. And you just say, you know what? I'm glad I didn't step foot outside of the airport. And I'm glad that we just had to suffer inside the airport. Cause I don't know what it'd be like on the other side. (laughs) What's that? Go back to the free state of Florida. So this is a good question. Daniel, Daniel raises about what's, what's our take on X punks moving to Solana. Well, before X punks moved, uh, Mm -hmm. To Solana, Jeff and I already said that we were going to go ahead and put the uh, the badass uh, chimps over on Solana. So these are going to Solana. We're still going to be on the XRPL, but the badass chimps are going to Solana. So there they are right there. There's the badass chimps. And they are badass, by the way. So there they are. The badass chimps yeah. are moving to Solana. 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 We got a lot of stuff in plan for the badass yetis as well their stuff yeah, badass, yeti, badass yowies coming out as well badass yowies, badass yowies will be yowies. on the xrpl yeah and so that's our take on it you know um uh listen you got to go where the um jeff and i have always been um blockchain agnostic we've always been supporters of big mm-hmm. supporters of bitcoin i know a lot of people out there the same nutters that were wrong about everything else uh let's see he who was it so alchemist had had it in here we said the ones that laughed when Bitcoin was 15K and then watched it all we go up to 70,000 capitulated and went in. I've always I've always owned Bitcoin. I've always owned ETH. I don't care about ETHgate. I don't care. I'm in I'm a, an investor and I look to make money. And that's it. That's a, that's the bottom line. And there's a lot of things that I own. We happen to talk about XRP on this channel, but if you don't think Bitcoin it, Bitcoin's the one that dug the well. Bitcoin will be 300,000. Bitcoin will be 500,000. Bitcoin will be 600,000 and XRP is still Blockchain backer and I got into a, a little bit of disagreement. He's a guy that owns that. But we at lunchtime, I said, Bitcoin will go to 100,000. XRP won't hit a dollar. He said, not true. Bitcoin will hit 200,000. XRP won't go to a dollar. <laughs> we got into it a little bit at lunchtime uh, with Dirk and Crypto Eddie and stuff. And um, yeah, I was a little bit having fun, but I like, show me. You know, Bitcoin hits 100,000. See, Let's see if Bitcoin, uh, if XRP hits a dollar. You know, will it? I don't know. It's possible. It's being, um, yeah. Will it hit the all time high? But Bitcoin, if you don't think Bitcoin is the is the end all be all, the one that, that, that that's going to be around, if people are like, it's going to zero. Well, good. You can continue to think that. But on this channel, we are blockchain agnostic. And so we're, we want to go to where the, the, uh, where the action is. You know, there's a lot going on in Solana. It's not a perfect chain. It goes down every month and a half, just like on Q. Um, it goes down for eight hours. And you know what? People don't give a shit. They don't care. They don't care if Bitcoin takes longer to settle. That's not, they don't care. People are like, well, what's its use case? This care. use case is it's 70 some thousand dollars. That's its use case. It's a hedge against inflation. It's a place, a safe place right. to put your money because eventually you'll get there, right? We have we have 11 to almost 12 years now of of history to know what Bitcoin is, Jeff. So don't, don't be so stupid. And these people that are these... Uh, they always talk about Bitcoin maxis and ETH maxis. Don't be an XRP maxi. Don't be stupid. Yeah. I just told people not to be stupid. Joe. Yeah, don't be stupid. <laughs> you can have your favorite. I'm my favorite football team. That's what you I, just I, said. I don't like the other football teams. But that's okay. You could have your favorite, but don't sit there and, I mean, we always talk yeah. about it on the stock market. You wouldn't say, dude, I'm only Apple. Every other stock is worthless. I mean, that's how stupid you sound when you start that saying. Might be true. I don't know. Could be true. I don't know. <laughs> might be true. I don't know. <laughs> 700, 760 people Beautiful. tuned in watching us here on X, Love YouTube, it. and Rumble. Uh, really, really great. <laughs> Multi chain maxis. <laughs> yeah, but he's, he might have sold it. Multi chain maxis, right? Well said, Scotty. Well said. We're multi chain maxis. That's the way to do it. He says BCB sold it at 60K. Well, that was his target, dude. And People that sit, there, I'll be, I'll be honest, Jeff. I laugh at people that go like, "You got to have a plan. Possible. You got to know your targets." No, you don't have a plan, dude. I don't have a plan. I sell when I want to sell, and I buy when I want to buy. That's my freaking plan. But if your plan is, I hit this target and I sell, okay, you made your spread. You did your X, whatever it was, ten X, twelve X. I don't know. You made that. It's up to X. you. It's, it's your person. You decide. This is a great thing about the world is everybody can do what works for them. 
Uh, these people that say you got to work out a target and the off ramps. No. Nah, okay. If that's your thing, go ahead and have fun with it. I don't do that, Jeff. There were some key YouTubers in the space that talked about off ramps from day one. We're talking, we're going back like five, six years ago. That's all they talk about was off ramps, off ramp, off ramp, off ramp, off ramp. And, and shit back then I remember saying, and, and you and I talked about it is that if you, if you're passionate about building this space and developing this space and you believe that this is the future, why are you so concerned about massive off ramps? Why are you so concerned about getting all your money out of the space? You know, you put it in the fiat. it's just, and, and you uh, want to go back into fiat, but yet you keep talking about how amazing the space is, where the space is going. This is the future of finance. It's a, it's everything. This is where everyone's going to be, is going to be in crypto. But yet if you're in the, if all of a sudden, you know, you look in and, and everything skyrockets again, you have to have a fast off ramp and get everything off. Because the so the the uh, platforms might crash and you might not be able to get everything out. All right, well that's how it is. <laughs> trying to laugh, Jeff. Trying to laugh. Yeah, we Jeff and I had so many laughs there. BTC is now a banker's coin. I like it. Absolutely right. So this it is, is a the banker's coin. That's right. Right, and that's a great thing because now it's the first. Think about this. It's the first time where you had because I mean Bitcoin rose on on the private market, right? And now you have institutional in there. It's it's got support from everywhere. And now the having is coming up. And you just imagine if it goes when it, once it breaks a hundred thousand, you can you imagine the miners? Because you know, the having talks about your your reward is half of what it used to be. And the whole idea of Bitcoin, even back in the day when it was pennies, the whole idea of the reward was it was predicated on high prices, right? You want the price to continue to be moving so that it makes sense for miners with the power consumption. And the mining, so you the miners are going to go crazy. This thing hits 109, 110, 120. Miners are going to be in business. They'll be still making, they'll still be still making good money. So I think so. Buy Bitcoin, buy whatever, buy whatever you want, you know. Do <laughs> buy what whatever. Do what you got to do. We, What's good peak, for you. we like it. We, we get behind it. But listen, we're not, we're multi-chain maxis. Where's Scotty's? Right there. Inclu Scotty said it including best. Including fiat. Maxis. Including fiat chip. Including stocks. Including fiat. stocks. If you look fiat. at what Futureverse is doing, Jeff, yeah. they're they're yeah. multi they're multi chain too. This is the whole idea: is you attract all the, you want to attract different people. There's different flavors, different strokes for different folks, and this is what you want to do. And you know, the fact is, is that Aaron McDonald stood up on the stage in Australia and made an amazing announcement, saying that the Zaman wallet is now going to be supported. Dude, how easy, how great! Because it was kind of a pain to use. I'm not a fan of MetaMask. Everyone knows that. No one, I don't know if anyone is, but to use Zaman, holy crap, it's just native. It's going to be phenomenal. Right. Sure, look at it, Ramon. You could do what you want to do and live in color. I like that in I can make my moves color. whenever. Remember that? <laughs> do -do 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 -do. In living color. <laughs> oh, Greatest yeah. show ever, man. I miss that show. And that's what I'm talking about right there. Even, even you know, if you're passionate about the SHIB, the SHIB going parabolic at four zeros and a three. Look at that. It's down 1.2% today. But That's look okay. at that. Look at that growth. Look at that growth past look at this, Jeff. I got a 121% chip. New investor said he was late replay in the future. That's okay. Listen, you come it's when you come in. The cool thing is you can watch the replay. It was a fiery show today. We had a lot of fun talking about our time in Australia and how much we loved it there and how much how great mm -hmm. the people were and and looking forward to going back next year. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's just great. And I, I so much enjoyed getting together with Scotty. Scotty and I and Jeff got to hang out. And hang out, uh, you know, kind of quietly in his hotel room, shooting the shit, laughing, joking. Oh, yeah. Just what a great, what a great time that was, man. Like that to me is like just such, fun. such a great rare moment that we could do, and 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 all the stuff awesome. that Scotty arranged and and Scotty set us up for success. He really did a great job of prepping us. And you know, we got up there, and people said we did a good job, but there's so many people behind uh, what made it work up there on stage. People that prepped us, and Scotty that gave us the right tools to make sure that we had an engaging um conversation without that it would have it wouldn't have been anything it was so scotty big big shout out to you and everything you did at the conference too and and the future verse and uh you know aaron and the whole team there are just i was very impressed with the team and what they're doing there it's just phenomenal so 789 people tuned in right now checking us out over on rumble x and youtube and that's pretty awesome. I'd like to see that get to 800, but we're at 700 and what I just say, 789. We're like at 795 for a little second there. 789 tuned in. Got Caroline, make sure you don't get a flight 
back at 6 a.m. next year. <laughs> well, a lot of choices, Caroline. I mean, what are you going to do? <laughs> there, yeah. I mean, it wasn't it was that like, bad, though. But <laughs> Yeah. Um, so who was the life of the party? Everybody was the life of the party. Everybody rose to the life of the party. Of course, Waz is a rare individual. Uh, but I, I would have to say that um, everybody, yeah, everybody was. Everybody it was, was great. Jovial. Everything was great. Mm -hmm. Oh, Caroline was the life of the party. She was loving it. She was she was great. She was there everywhere. It was fantastic, you know. Um, Fabio, I mean, everybody, Ali, it's just everybody, everybody that I met, just incredible human beings. Uh, it was so funny because uh, just as a side, I know we're running long here. I got a rock. I, I got an appointment, but one of the funny things that happened was uh, one of my buddies um hit me up on twitter he's like hey did you find any bills fans there buffalo bills fans obviously we're both bills fans and i'm like i'm like a weird question he asked me if i was traveling with any gear and i usually don't i usually don't travel with you know name brand stuff or i, I don't even own any I, I, even even our brand we didn't have there just you know was, we didn't yeah, we, we, unfortunately nothing. we did it. We next year, we, no on the chain nothing. next year we're bringing yeah. the coffee though i don't know how we're going to do the coffee there scotty wanted us to have the badass yetis coffee. we're going to figure it out we're going to plan it way way in advance and make sure we kind of ship it yeah we'll ship it ahead of time figure so out that, make sure it gets there and we'll try a couple different ways we'll try a couple <laughs> we'll just it was a little challenging to figure out how to get it there um but where was i going with this jeff there's something i wanted to say and i totally lost it along the way man I, it drives me crazy when that stuff happens what was i going to trying to find up uh, trying to find this cool up oh, trying to find matt the uh trying to find matt um i should have uh downloaded yeah happy easter everybody out there it's, you know um tomorrow is easter so there will i don't think there's gonna be a show tomorrow jeff oh tomorrow's uh easter sunday yeah easter right. sunday so there won't be a show tomorrow i'm gonna uh hey. jeff's gonna be running uh building the plane and flying it solo um i will be out i got a bunch of, i got a bunch flying of people <laughs> Bunch of things right. I got to handle for the next couple Where of weeks. So I'll be taking a little bit of sabbatical from on the chain, but don't worry, you're in great hands with Jeff. Jeff brings the brings every time, and I will be back soon enough. Yeah, Might be a couple this. weeks down the line, but there I wanted is. to jump in here today and 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 thank all you guys. Long and one, great. I'm trying to find that picture from uh, Matt. He had this great picture of uh, a badass Yeti shirt. Oh, and he yeah, posted I, it, and I'm trying to find it, and I'm not finding yeah. it phone let me see if i can show you on my phone uh, let's Why not see work let's see yeah he wore a badass yeti shirt that was so freaking cool let's see if i can find it looking for it it's no, so funny find them. so many photos man here it is all right this is it you have it oh there we go there it is look at that that is kick-ass right there <laughs> Look at that. Look at that shirt, man. He did such a great job pulling that together. He was able to get, a, I guess, a buddy of his somewhere in that yeah, local but they area. Yeah, able to do tribe on it, and he had to have him redo it. <laughs> oh, that's redo. right. That's right. He had to fix it, so it was like, what the hell, you know? It looks really good. We got to get some of those shirts done up over here. If we could find someone local to do up some shirts. That'd be awesome. There you go. The Blue Tribe. Check it out. Badass Yeti's Blue Tribe at, on the... He printed the really well. I was shocked at how how the well print it quality print quality is really outstanding i mean down to the detail it was so detailed it's really really nice yeah it was phenomenal right oh there's a picture of us right there jeff look at that right there right where there oh there go. you go with crypto eddie nice that was very cool yeah, yeah. very cool that's it guys we got to rock out of here i really enjoyed Man. being with you again today and, and kind of reminiscing about our time in australia we're almost to 800 here Thank you everybody yeah. that comes supports. Thank you for the the two um super chats. I really appreciate that, guys. Again, it helps pay the podcasting, you know, monthly things we got going on here and, and stuff. Booth this week, sure. Caroline. We gotta have that next year. Yeah, you can bring the lemon, the lemon trees. Yeah. We'll Put stock the lemon trees lemon. in the booth. You get a lemon. <laughs> yeah, we have the lemon trees in the background. So <laughs> there they are right there, Jeff. Lemon trees, baby. Lemon, lemon trees. trees. Yeah, I'll we'll make sure we've got the uh, lemon trees in there. That'd be fantastic. We definitely have to do that. We'll have merch. You can buy coffee in there. You can purchase some uh, le lemon trees. No. <laughs> we'll consolidate. We'll make it easy. Yeah, make it easy. Shirts and lemon that. trees. Then we I need someone that's going to run the booth. We're running around doing the stuff that we're doing. Lemon trees and coffee too, right? And coffee. coffee and NFTs. Shirts, you can lemon do it trees and coffee. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> 
shirts. Yeah, shirts. for sure. <laughs> shirts are there as well. Badass yeah, Yeti shirts, badass Yowie shirts. Man, yeah, the Yowies are coming out too. The badass Yowies. That's the Aussie equivalent of the Yetis and the Sasquatch. So we'll be doing that as well. It's you know again yeah. true to country. We we did a lot of research on what they what the, what they've been said to look like, and we'll have those coming out as well. So that's all we got, guys. We'll see that's you guys in the next one. The next one. Chip and Jeff. Oh, Jeff will be your pilot for the next couple of weeks, and I will be coming back into the fold soon enough. <laughs> see you guys all in. Chip and Jeff. Ow. Oh, people said you should have said that on stage. And all. It wasn't our event. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't our event. <laughs> Next time. Jeff. Right. Oh, you, guys coming in from, you guys, where are y'all coming in from? Uh, Chip and Jeff. Yeah. Oh. Are you down with OTC? Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.